All right, we're going to solve this equation as well. Uh, again, this one's a little bit different because now inside of this absolute value, we have more than just an x, okay? So we should get differing values of that x. Let's go ahead and take a look. So in this problem, notice that the absolute value is on its own side of the equal sign. And there's no absolute values over here. Not that that would make a difference. But what this allows us to do is to split this up into two separate equations. Uh, now, th what's inside the absolute value is not going to change. And we discussed this in class, okay? We have 4x plus 2 twice, but they're going to be equaling different things. First, it will equal 6. Second, it will equal the opposite of 6. Now, remember, this is what is inside the absolute value. And since it's equaling 6, that's what will become what is inside the absolute value. So same with this negative 6. Eventually, this 4x plus 2 will be a negative 6. This 6 and this negative 6, both of these are not referring to this 6. It's what will end up inside the absolute values. I hope that kind of clarifies what's happening here because a lot of people are confused. It seems like, uh, well, we can't have an absolute value of negative 6. That's true, but notice we've also removed the absolute values here. Let's go ahead and solve. We're going to subtract 2 from both sides. And yes, I'm doing these simultaneously. I hope that's okay. And then finally, we'll divide both sides by 4. Bam, and there we go. We have our answers there. So notice, now, uh, and I would highly recommend doing this, especially on quizzes and tests, okay? We would want to check both of these answers in order to make sure that the original equation would give us a true statement. Let's go ahead and check both of these. So I'm going to start with this one on the left. First thing we need to do is get rid of that x and replace it with what we think that x is. And right now we think x is 1. And now we'll just solve this using the order of operations. Now, I apologize, I didn't make that very big. But yes, that is an absolute value part. Order of operations on the inside of this thing would have us multiply the 4 and 1 first. And that equals 4. Finally, we'll add those two together and would get 6. Well, how far away is 6 from 0? It's 6 away from 0. And that equals 6. So remember, I remember what I was saying about these 6s being on the inside of that absolute value. Notice this 6, which because we were using the 1, this 6 eventually became this 6 right here, which was inside the absolute value, okay? So checking that 1, now we know it checks off. Now we'll go ahead and check the second one, x equals negative 2. And once again, we refer back to the order of operations, so we'd multiply these first, and we would get a negative 8, plus 2, absolute value of that equals 6. And then we would combine these two, so we'd have the absolute value of negative 6. Now once again, okay, I'll, let me get rid of some of that. Notice that we have this negative 6 inside the absolute values. Once again, that comes from this negative 6 when we split up that equation. The last thing we have here is to find the absolute value of negative 6, or in other words, how far away is negative 6 from 0? It is 6 away from 0. 6 does equal 6, and this one checks off as well. Check. Now, once again, uh, not many people do this checking stuff, so I highly recommend it, and I hope this is helpful for you.